Oh, wait, wait. You're drinking coffee and it's like fucking 9 30 at night? That's what I mean. Let's get that's it. Dude, I mean. You are literally. Poor he's son, literally the, he's like he's the, not good. The, no, no, you don't understand. He's the dumbest smart kid I've ever met <laughs> in my life. Literally. Yes, yes. That's this should be literally, Billy, this is the cold opening. Your brother <laughs> is literally the dumbest smart kid I've ever met. He's a glutton for punishment. No, boo. He's not. <laughs> so true. That's me. It's true. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Domain Sherpa. And thank you for tuning in to the podcast with the best domain name and digital asset content in the world. Today's episode is a Domain Sherpa review titled The Earth is Not Flat, featuring Drew, Jen, and the one and only Logan Flat. And on today's show, we play the domain game featuring DefiU.com, Hydrotherapy.com, and Perceptive.io. And then we've got the Name Jet and a Jet segment sponsored by Name Jet. And we talk about some domains coming up for auction, including Akira.com futuretech.com, topform.com, and crit.com. It's Drew's last time on Sherpa while he's in the Far East, and it's Logan's first time on the show since I've been the host. So this is a long episode with a ton of great domain content, and all that and more is coming up here now on Domain Sherpa. And remember, if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, you can also watch the video version at domainsherpa.com and on our YouTube channel at ds.tv. You can also listen to the shows on Apple and Spotify and other podcasts platforms as well and please make sure to hit the like button the subscribe button and all that good stuff where you can and help domain sherpa grow the pie um, we also integrate our shows now with muse.ai which provides new search functionality for the shows and transcripts as well so definitely check all that out props to our sponsor dan.com the number one place in the world to buy and sell your domains with a special platform made for domain investors and special shout out to our own business media options the number one domain brokerage in the world specializing in domain acquisition sales and appraisal Find out more at mediaoptions.com, or you can also sign up for our newsletter for the best domain names and domain opportunities available in the market every week, and also featuring key insights and other helpful information related to branding, naming, and domain investing. With that, it's now time to get into this episode of Domain Sherpa, where all roads lead to domains. What's up, Sherpa Network? Thank you for tuning in today. My name is Jonathan Tenenbaum, a.k.a. JT, a.k.a. J on, a.k.a. Sherpa Winfrey. And I'm the host and producer of Domain Sherpa, where all roads lead to domains. Today's show is a Domain Sherpa review, where we get into the minds of successful domain investors using real examples so we can learn strategies and tactics to become more successful domain investors ourselves. These are the experts. These are the OGs. We've got a pseudo special guest today, which I'm extremely excited about. There are four segments to a Domain Sherpa review. We've got the grand opening. That's where I intro the Sherpas. We talk about what's going on with them, do some AKAs, some related things, some unrelated things. We'll see what kind of tangents we might get off on. Then we got segment two, which is the domain game, where we hear about what the Sherpas recently bought or sold. Everybody guesses on the price. We keep score. We declare a winner and maybe even give out some swag to said winner. Then uh, segment three, we got Name Jack and the Jet, sponsored by our friends at Name Jet. We review a list of uh, domains coming up for auction. And then last but not least, we got grand closing, where we'll discuss anything we haven't covered already, what's going on in the domain space looking at the market trends current events and allowing our guests to mention and promote anything they want to talk about that we have not already discussed with that let's go ahead and introduce the sherpas over to my right i got my homegirl jen sale aka aussie osborne aka olivia newton jen aka rocket out dundee aka dingo star aka mel born to be wild Jingle. aka jen if you have to ask how much it is you can't afford it because our stuff never goes on sale aka sipping on jen and juice <laughs> AKA the Ever Queen. What's up, girlfriend? How are we doing? I'm doing very, very well. Thank you so much for asking, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? I'm How doing are great. you doing? I'm doing awesome. I'm doing, we were off on some kind of conversation off, uh, I guess, off stage, right? Where uh, Drew was referring to me as the dumbest smart kid he knows. So, uh, you know, we might see some of that in the, in the cold open. We'll see what Billy does with that. Uh, but These no, truths uh, are self-evident. Truths are self-evident. We 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 political right now. All right. Well, you know what? Let's keep it moving. I'll continue to do the intros because I want to get to the one. Although Jen, yours matters, but I want to get to the one that really matters today. 
And uh, so, but on the way, I've got one more to do in the meantime. To my <laughs> lower right, I got my boy Andrew Rosner, aka Morpheus, aka the Dirk Diggler of Digital Assets, aka Bob Lee Swagger the Sniper, aka Drew. Drew got what I need, aka Never Gonna Give Drew Up, aka Graybeard the Domain Pirate. Checking in. This will be the last show that he checks in from the Far East during this particular adventure and trek. And uh, how we feeling, man? What's good? Uh, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Two more days to Chiang Mai, then we're gonna go uh, hop on a sailboat, sail for uh, uh, six days on the west coast of Thailand. Go check out, uh, uh, you know, some of those little islands. You know, like when Leonardo DiCaprio filmed the beach. Ooh, okay. But we're gonna we're gonna just go sail around and check out some some islands. We're gonna stay away from most of the uh, touristy places and 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 hot spots, but. Um, uh, and then we're gonna, you know, just kick it two nights, uh, two nights of, uh, posh in, in, in Bangkok. And then that's it. We're out. It's a wrap. Two months. It flew by. I can't believe it, but I'm also very, very ready, uh, to get home, get back to my routine. Uh, I think, I think we should do a, uh, a, uh, a, a debriefing episode. Uh, you know, it'd be like the domain Sherpa, you know, travel extravaganza. Yeah. Like, like episodes. a Fromer's, Fromer's uh, guide. Yeah. You, you know, it'd be, it'd be actually an interesting angle for sure, but to have like a little bit like, you know, it's interesting, right? What, what would we get into is we get into digital assets, right? And so the people that are really experts in these subjects are, um, you know, they tend to be let's say flexible they, they they live in different places they travel a lot uh you know which i think could be said about everybody on here except you jt and um uh continue go ahead keep talking. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> uh, i'm just taking I notes think that there, you know no it's idea. interesting I, I think that there would actually be this like really unique uh perspective on travel unique destinations how to travel types of travel, uh, uh, things to do in certain places that, that would probably resonate with most of our audience. Uh, well, yeah. And I've heard from more uh, than one person about, you know, they're enjoying hearing about your travels. You know, people are like, it's super oh, yeah? interesting. Love hearing about what Drew's got yeah. going on in the far East. And, uh, so yeah, well, and then I, I guess if we were guiding people in their travels, that would actually make us actual Sherpas, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, totally. <laughs> more in line with the, I like more it. in line with the definition. I like it. I I think we're onto something. I think we should interview people that come back from like cool travel and like get a debrief. Yeah. Well, I think, look, a lot of us Domain are digital Sherpa nomads. travel debrief. I like that domain Sherpa travel debrief. All right, man, we can make it happen. We know we've got lots of digital nomads that are part of our circle. So there's no question that, um, you know, and, and some travel we do together, right. We all were, uh, we, we got together yep. out in LA, a bunch of us got together out in Vegas. I mean, there's definitely some things to do in and around that stuff. But I think that the trip that you're taking right now is 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 particularly interesting because it's it's somewhere that not a lot of people have gone, especially the different places that you've gone in the process, right? You guys weren't just in Bangkok. You've been in Chiang Mai. You've been in Laos. You've been in Vietnam. You're going to be on a boat, like Lonely Island. And, uh, you know, just, just living, man. It's really all good. So we're all yeah, just living it, vicariously. It's been an amazing you, trip. I, I but, will um, say two months is a long time to travel. I, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I, I basically come to a couple of conclusions. I'll just shout those out. and then we can For me, I've come to the conclusion that the ideal period of time for, let's say, holiday travel, decompression, relaxation, et cetera, is three weeks. You need one week to basically decompress. Then you've got basically roughly 10 days of like, all right, kill it, just you're, you're chilling, you're doing whatever you're doing, but you're in a different frame. You, you, your perspective has changed. You're sort of, you've adjusted to whatever time zones or whatever. You're just, you're, you're on a new plane. Okay. And then, you know, you got the last couple of days that are just anxiety of, okay, it's time to go. So I think three weeks is like the ideal decompression travel time. If you're going like culture heavy, you're trying to really get to know a place. I think like five weeks is great, right? And five weeks was kind of the turning point for me where I was like, all right, I'm actually really ready to get back now and like uh, get back to my routine. I, you know, I'm right, sitting yeah. here at a very small table in a very uncomfortable wooden chair. This is how I've been working. I got, 
it's a good thing I'm in Thailand. I'm getting, you know, Thai massage three, four times a week to make up for this damn wooden chair. But otherwise, I'd be basically paralyzed. Uh, well, you and have I multiple just Herman my, Miller my, chairs at, at, at your home office. Yeah, man, so. I want my Herman Miller back. I want my three monitors back. I want my sauna back. I want, you know, I want my, I want my comforts. I want my routine. More than anything, I, 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 I am. I always miss my bed. Whenever I'm away yes. for an extended period yeah. of time, like I just have 100%. this like thing about my, my pillow, sheets, my bed, my air con, like just that comfort space. It's like sure. I was away for like three days this weekend and I was just like, I just want to go home. Yeah. Like, but I have done like the extended, like you, like I think the longest I did was four or six weeks over in Africa and that was in like South Sudan. So that was like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's shit. That's, a, that's different. That, that's, that's something yeah, extra. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, hey, great. All right, now, so, can I please – I want to move on because I'm very, very excited for the first oh, time. you since... know what? Hold on. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Okay. Do that. Do that. Okay. No, no, I was just okay. going to come back because I actually had a domain store to tie into this, which What's happened the... totally coincident. All right. Do you want to Two domain tell stores, it? actually. Let me, let me finish no, the, the intro. Do the, the intro for Logan. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Thank you. So for the first time since I've been host of Domain Sherpa, we've got the one and only Logan Flat, aka Wolverine, aka Logan Paul, aka Sweet and Low Gin Flat, aka Logan the Earth is not flat, aka Logan Flat and Scruggs. What's up, dude? So for those of you who don't know, uh, founder of Media Co, uh, Media Code, private investment fund focused on digital real estate, basically a domain name portfolio company, founder of Gain Financial, creating and optimizing digital assets for income, registered his first domain name in 1998, which was actually powerwealth.com, started investing mm-hmm. in domains in 2009 after the global uh, financial calamity of 2008, where his long, short hedge fund startup went nowhere fast 2000 plus names in his tour in his portfolio he's a texas guy he's a cfa he's an all-around great dude you may have heard or seen him most recently on andrew alleman's podcast and uh and now we have the pleasure of having him on the show with us i saw him in vegas i said man when when are you coming back on sherpa he said when are you gonna have me on and here we are (laughs) what is up dude how are you well thanks for having me good to be here uh things are going great i'm um you know, I was, I, we did two months uh, last year in China and Thailand. Uh, and so we're planning this year to go back to do more time in China. Of course, that's where my wife's family is. But also looking at, uh, or definitely doing Singapore as well, um, plus uh, maybe Vietnam. Or I want to find out more from Drew about his trip. Um, but we're looking at either Laos or, or Vietnam probably most likely for a long, a long family two months away. Um but uh, we love getting getting out of the country and you know touring around and uh, really getting to see her family that's uh, you know back back in China still. So whereabouts in China? Uh, they're in Shandong Province in a city called okay. Shouguang, near uh, Qingdao area. Mm-hmm. Very cool. northern China. You know, so I saw in one of the uh, blogs or a little interview that you did, and I don't know it, that your wife is in the wholesale seafood industry. Is that right? That's correct. What? So, That's correct. So have you and no. Drew had this conversation? Because no, we've had this, we didn't. We've, we've, we've had this conversation. He just doesn't remember it. <laughs> ah, okay. So, wait, but but all right. Talk talk to me. Talk to me. So so, so you so you supplied. No, I, need, I need to get your wife on the show. I, so you I mean, supplied. Listen, listen. Chinese seafood wholesalers. Those are my people. Yeah, those are my yeah. people. I know. I know. Like, like so you so you you, you know supplied saying? scallops, right? We you bleed. We bleed the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was primarily scholars. Yeah. Okay. So, so she has buyers who buy from companies like the one you work for, who buy, they buy scallops from one company, they buy crabs from others and lobsters from others. But she's the person who's going into the restaurants and actually selling all this stuff to the restaurateurs or to the chefs. Ah, okay. And she's a local, she's a local wholesale uh, 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 distributor. Texas. If Texas is local, yes, she's all over Texas. Yeah. Um, Local meaning she's not like, you know, she's not she's not a trader. She's she's actually a, 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 a like almost food service. Yeah, I mean, she's going into the restaurants and talking to yeah, them, food service. getting their yeah. getting the food, contract. We would exactly. say food service. Yep. exactly, exactly. And uh, but she she has to keep keep her finger on the pulse of everything with all the different types of seafood. Hundred percent. Um, so she's you know on the phone all day long talking to, the, to different people, buyers and sellers and everything else. So uh, 
you know, I'm up here in my little oh, office, man. all quiet on my little laptop, but she's talking on the phone all day long in three different languages. Yeah. She's speaking usually in English, Mandarin, and a little bit of uh, Spanish because of a lot of the yeah. chefs and everything or something, yeah. you know, from Mexico. Totally. Oh, yeah. that's wild, dude. Yeah. Oh, see, I, I love it. Cool. A small it. world. Uh, speaking yeah. of family, since I kind of you know brought that up, uh, just a big shout out to our boy Matthew Zyker, who uh, welcomed baby number one. Chris is a grandfather. We are super excited. The Media Options family continues to grow, and it is a beautiful, wonderful thing. So, big shout out to Matthew and mom and the baby, and uh, so yeah, all congratulations that all around. Yeah, congratulations. Very happy day. It is good in this in all this chaos. Imagine being born on Bitcoin fifty thousand day. <laughs> on Bitcoin, <laughs> is it the last time? Is it is it is it the last time to get Bitcoin in the forties or what? Uh, I suspect you'll have one more opportunity, but before we get back to, into the forties, and when I say forties, it's probably like forty eight. Um, uh, before you're going to get an opportunity to get it at forty in the forties again, uh, or even fifties for that matter. Uh, you'll probably see something in the 80 to 120 range and then a crash All right, and then well, late correction, you know, a correction. Two, yes. A correction. correction. Well said. A correction. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. People tend to get exuberant, you know, and then you gotta, you know, you, know, you gotta yeah, slap the spit out of their them. mouth you a little bit. Them. You and then, them. uh, and then take right. another run at it. And, and uh, I think the second, you know, it's, I keep telling everybody it's going to be a two hump camel. That's what we're looking at. Two hump camel. We're in the first hump. That first hump is probably going to top out in that 85 to 120 range. Back down to that 48, something like that, 42, 48. And then off to the races for somewhere between August and November 2026, uh, 2025. Uh, probably, you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna say one fifty conservative, two twenty five. That's it. You heard it here, folks. You heard it here. That's it. That's my prediction. By the way, not financial advice. Nothing on here is financial advice. Absolutely not. Although it is a commodity, and so actually, there's no repercussions. Well, I don't suggesting know. all I'm but saying. Nonetheless, nonetheless, NFA. it is not financial advice. It is uh, simply my expectation, and I. As you all know, love to put my money where my mouth is. That's right. So, uh, uh, so you had a domain I just story? want to talk about seafood. Can we just go back to seafood? <laughs> you said you had uh, a domain story. Well, so so you know, we're tying up this this uh, the tail end of this this uh, uh, Southeast Asia trip, and uh, it was funny. I didn't even put two and two together, but. I was uh, walking around in one of the, there's, there's a neighborhood here called Nimon in Chiang Mai. And that's kind of where all, all the expats are. It's where all the digital nomads are. It's a beautiful neighborhood. It's got so much going on. Uh, great restaurants, great cafes, unbelievable coffee. Uh, and uh, I bumped into this co-working space called Yellow. And it turns out, it's the guy that I sold yellow.com two years ago, oh. Alexis. Uh, but you know, he doesn't use yellow.com for just a co working space. He has a whole empire called yellow. Uh, he's got okay. yellow capital. Uh, but you know, he, he lives here uh, most of the time. And so he's got a whole thing going on. He's got like a really nice co- coffee shop. The whole building painted yellow. It's called yellow cafe, right? He's got okay. yellow co working, which is the number one co working in Chiang Mai. Um, uh, beautiful, brand new, super modern, like looks like a WeWork, right? But on steroids, super nice. Uh, so anyways, that was really cool. Uh, we were communicating. Unfortunately, um, I missed him. He actually got out of Dodge, uh, which brings me to another point. Anybody visiting Chiang Mai, uh, turns out you do not want to be here between the end of February. Uh, like we're actually leaving in two days and we're leaving just in time. Like we start, we wake up now and we just start to smell this smoky smell in the morning and this whole Northern area of Thailand in particular Chiang Mai, uh, from late February through basically the end of April, um, the farmers are burning their fields and the air pollution becomes, uh, second worst in the world for a period of like two months here. Uh, only okay. behind, I forget which city in China, it might be Shanghai actually. Um, but it literally becomes the second worst air quality in the world, which is shocking because the rest of the time it's like 
couldn't be more beautiful. It's this beautiful valley and crisp blue skies and beautiful. But so, anyways, um, well, that's pretty cool. Uh, that like was, so, then yeah. Main story yeah. one was was uh, 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 the yellow dot com, right? And then number two is uh, this other guy who uh, you know we helped uh, we helped to acquire a domain. I'm not going to mention the domain name, but it was a very big domain. It was a seven figure name. And he listened to my um, uh, podcast with Tim Ferriss and heard that I was going to be in Thailand. And he reached out. And he's like, hey, mate, where are you going to be in Thailand? I live in Thailand. You know, <clears> come <throat> check me out. Uh, and uh, uh, oh, by the way, I've got a mega yacht. Why don't you come out on it? So anyways, when we go out sailing uh, next week, uh, hopefully I'm going to uh, connect. He, he's going to be in exactly the same place. And hopefully I'm going to connect and go uh, check this guy out on his yacht and see see how he's living. Oh, wow. Uh, see, look at that. It is a small so world. Anyways, and all as roads we say, all roads lead to lead domains. domains. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So, Logan, speaking of domains, and uh, so you're talking about you're up there in your little office and, you know, kind of click clack in a way. So, you know, what takes up a lot of your time as far as, you know, are you acquiring a lot of names on a daily basis? Are you working on outbounding, trying to find deals? Like, what's your... Uh, you know, what's, what's taking up a lot of your time sort of in general lately? Um, it's, it's, yes, yeah, it's, it's more, you know, looking at the auctions, um, trying to find out, uh, you know, what I want to buy and what I want to avoid. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm also looking at hand regs here and there, cause I do a lot of CCTLD uh, investing. Okay. So there are hand regs that are still out there that, uh, I'm looking for. So I'm kind of, uh, you know, kind of trolling through all okay. the, uh, all the streams, looking at uh, different inventory to, uh, acquire potentially. And, uh, you know, I, I only really do that in the mornings. Um, yeah. my afternoons are more, uh, uh, you know, I think I take my daughter to work every morning and start kind of okay. late taking her to school and everything. Um, but then in the afternoons I go to the gym, you know, work out, do the spa and everything else, things like that. So, um, then I pick my daughter up at the, at the end of the day and that's pretty much it. So I don't do a lot of, a lot of work during the day. It's after at night when they're asleep, uh, I'll come back up here and I'll do, you know, more work, a okay. few more hours in there at nighttime so it's, it's it's in the morning and then late at night that i'm i'm up here hunting back in and looking are, for things. Are, so. are you still messing around in financial markets a lot um not so much i'm not, I'm not a trader you know i'm uh, looking for you know stocks to invest in and buy and hold uh but not not so much uh buying and selling and I, i've done that in the past and lost my shirt and uh, i'm more of a yeah. more of a warren buffett kind of buy and hold kind of guy so Okay. Yeah. So I didn't realize I just heard in JT's intro, he was talking about that you know, previously had a long short hedge fund. No. Well, I worked at one for a short while and then I was starting my own in 2008. Okay. But, but the day I was going to start that, raising r- rough time, rough, the day, rough time the day, the day I was going to start raising, raising funds was uh, the day the Lehman brothers filed bankruptcy and the market oh. crashed. <laughs> so it went, mm-hmm. it went nowhere fast, nowhere fast. Yeah. How'd that cold calling go? Yeah, no, not so great. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, all right. Well, cool, man. I, you know, it's funny. You've got sort of this prototypical, like, you know, I think the domain or lifestyle that a lot of folks, you know, aspire to have where mm-hmm. quality time, you're doing your thing, you're doing it well. You, you, you mentioned the CCTLD stuff. And I remember, mm-hmm. you know, some of that and some of our prior just, con, you know, names con conversations and things. Um, wh- where are you at with .ai? Do you have any .ai domains? Were you ahead of the curve on mm-hmm. that at all? What's uh, What's going on there? Yeah, I was buying them from the auctions back in like 2017, 2018, getting some some one words. Um, I've got things like integer, uh, wealth, Excel, um, things like that, that um, plus others. <laughs> that, yeah, uh, awesome. Yeah, I, I sold more .ai last year. Um, sold a couple other, uh, other .ai. I undersold some .ai's in like 2021, okay. unfortunately. If I'd held on to them, they would have been much better. I've got Procure out on a long-term uh, LTO right now. So, okay. um, you know, I've had some some pretty good ones that are in, in my inventory and um, or in my portfolio and just right I love for the right wealth. buyers. Tell not a, wealth.ai is a banger. That's a, that's oh, yeah. a great name. Yeah, that is really that's great. That's a great name. Don't sell yeah. that one cheap. I don't plan on it. <laughs> yeah don't play it yeah um, what, what would you what would you uh, uh, you know quite frankly i can't claim to be an expert in how to price in dot ai to me because i truly don't have oh, a Drew just idea, said he but, claims not to be an expert uh, in something 
Go ahead. You are Sorry. so full of it. I don't claim to be an expert in anything other than things that I'm an expert in. And I think, you know, <laughs> it's pretty fair to say I'm an expert in domain names and dom- out of prime value of premium.com. I think I'm fair to say, you know, uh, I'm an expert in a few other weird things. But I don't claim to be an expert in 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 all that many things, to be quite honest. Oh, I'm just um, but what would you what would you price wealth.ai at? I, I, well, I, I have what I would price it at. I, I'm curious. I, I'm happy I to say it. what I would say. I don't know. I've got it. I mean, I've got an anchor price, let's say, of like a yeah. million dollars, a million dollars right now. Okay. okay. Uh, but obviously, if uh, a compelling offer came along, I would, you know, certainly want to talk about it. But I've definitely bought it because of wealth management and the, you know, algorithmic trading that um, has been going on oh, for yeah. quite some time using AI. Um, I'm just waiting for the right kind of it's, it's it's not a startup it's a it's maybe a spin-off more likely uh where a company wants to hang their hat on the brand wealth.ai in yeah. terms of managing wealth 100%. using artificial intelligence so so that that can be a well-to-do company who's going to do that so that's why I'm starting at around a million uh for that whether I get that or not who knows uh cuz it depends on how yeah. long this trend this trend in .ai lasts I do think it is somewhat of a hype phase right now um, but if I can ride that hype phase and uh, get some sales in, that would be great. Yeah, I love it. Um, yeah, you know, it's interesting. I saw Elliot Silver real quick posted uh, this week it's a point that I really liked that he made about uh, lease uh, and payment plan deals. That he was like, you know, he's careful not to do those on names that are very like sort of trend driven, right? Because it's the idea of like, all right, I'm going to put somebody on a three year payment plan where they're going to pay two grand a month as opposed to, you know, paying a big, you know, just getting more money in hand right away for a name that might not have the same value in not too long of a time frame. So I thought that was a really good point. I like that. I mean, I mean, it's common sense, but I thought when Elliot posted it, 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 that resonated, I thought that was cool. You know, we've had some of those same kind of conversations here. So yeah, man. All right. Well, good stuff. All right. Well, I think we've got through most of the, uh, you know, the intros at least, you know, so Billy will have to mark whatever time this is when we actually move into the domain game. Um, but this is where it's going to get interesting. Jen, do you have a domain name, domain game name? Or are we going to have to come back? Domain to game or... name. Domain game Say name. That name domain game name. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, know you said I do you... not. All right. Well, then we're going to just keep it moving directly to Drew and let Drew set it off with whatever name he wants to talk about. And uh, uh, means I gotta think. Um, okay. Um, don't be tricksy. Just so choose. the Jeopardy yeah, music. I, 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 I'm not even yeah, trying to. Uh, <laughs> all right. I've got one if you want me to go ahead. No, you can let All right, you go. go. You go. All right, that's fine. I was going to say we can also, we'll cut some, if there's a big old dead space of time, Billy will just fix that so it's not awkward, but it's fine. We can either wait for Drew or we can start with Logan. Yeah, go, go, go with Logan. We'll start with the guest. Okay. Uh, I've got a sale and it's uh, defyyou.com. So, D E F I U dot com. Oh. It's a DeFi U dot com. D E F I Y O U dot com. Like decentralized right. finance. Yeah, yeah. DeFi U. Is All it right. U, the letter U, or the Y let, the O letter U. U? The letter U. D E F I U. U. Yep. D F I U. Yep. Okay. I like it. Um, all right. Put it on your phone or some other way to display what you think it's all for. Uh. All right. Drew, do you have your phone with the, your guess? I'm still looking for a freaking name. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Defy you. All right. All right. Three, two, one. Let's flip. 
All right. Okay. We were kind of all in sort of in pocket. Drew is at 4,895. I'm at 7,499. And Jen is at $9,999. So all kind of within the same 5K window. Are we close? Are we in close. business? Who Who is the winner this round? Jen won, but she's not close. Yeah. Oh, good. good. That's awesome. Good, good job. Like it. All right. Damn. That's good news. You. <laughs> so, so I sold it for $38,500. What? 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 what is crazy? You just price that name at that price. So That's here's awesome. A couple, couple of decentralized finance. <laughs> so, real yeah. quick, I was calculating something else earlier today, and then the number that was on my phone was $34,785. For a second, I'm like, I should just, this is like a number already here. I should just leave it. And then I'm like, no, it's too high. And that would have actually still been under what you sold it for. You know what I'm saying? So, all right, well, how did you sell it? Stop. You lost. No, but I'm saying how I could have won, potentially, and been been closer than you. This is... (laughs) You know? So, in a lot of ways, I did win. Uh, No. Uh, (laughs) So, talk to me. Where did you sell it? The scary thing is that he actually believes that. He's telling himself that. There's an angle. He really believes it. There's an angle. Logan, Logan, tell us. Tell us the story. Tell us. Okay, so... The, the other kicker side of this is I hand registered this name back in uh, 2019 for $8.59. Wow. And, That's so and cool. back, back then, I was registering a bunch of Defy names because decentralized finance was coming out, and I'm a finance guy. So I guess back then I kind of knew about it and uh, registered a bunch of, I hand registered a bunch of Defy names. And Defy U and Defy University was, was another one I still own. Um, so I, on these kind of names, when they're, they're like you're in this kind of hype phase, like there was back then for Defy, um, you, I just tend to price high just to see what I can get because of the irrational behavior of the buyers out there um, and what they're willing to pay if they've got some recent funding or, again, they're a well-to-do spinoff from another company. Um, so I'm going to start high and anchor them that way and see if I can get that kind of price. And I think I had this one priced at like 44000 or something like that, or 48000 probably around there. Uh, but we did negotiate on this one. They did. They did uh, not just do buy it now. They um, they negotiated with me. And where, okay. did, you did, uh, where did you have it listed? Sorry, JT. Uh, oh, that's ahead. what I was going to say. Like well, I was just wondering. So it was forty four listed, and then I'm just wondering. So what? Where, where did they come in before? Like, and what was that negotiation like? If you can share it. Yeah. I don't recall because uh, this did come through Afternet Brokers, so they were you know relaying information to me, and I was holding firm on you know to a certain degree. I tend to not do below 80% of what my bin number is. I usually hold out for that. Um, uh, and then if I, you know, if I can't get there, I just, I wait for another buyer to come along. Um, but in this case, I, I was holding out probably to 80% or 90% probably, whatever it was, the number was. Um, and so that it really was the afternoon broker who was working them up to that 38.55 against my, my anchor price of 44 or 48, whatever it was. Wow. Well, good for you, man. I think everything about yeah. that's great. And shout out to Afternick. I mean, I appreciate when those yeah, guys- Yeah, hell do, of a sale. Yeah. yeah. And I appreciate when they put in that work to just, you know, not get you down. Well, get them, look, shout out Afternick. Shout out my boy, Aaron. <laughs> okay. However, <laughs> let's not give too much credit. Okay. In my experience, 99.9% of the time, they're trying to fucking convince me to s- undersell my name not convince the buyer to pay up okay yeah that's why i didn't no, i say not, shout out to not, them right. okay. didn't i just say yeah. that i said shout everybody out to them can do, okay everybody can do better all right okay uh, I'm, not, all right. I'm not big on you know here ooh, let's give you some flowers yeah, okay like no right, come on but let's go the and other thing is Sell these as, names okay, what okay. Worth. Oh, Jen. can i just say all right so no but there is something to consider as a domain investor in this scenario when an offer or negotiation comes through a third party platform that has a very high commission because you have to take that into consideration because you know that you're taking money off the table potentially up to 20 to 25% of what this person is offering because that is the commission they're taking it's just something that I'm dealing with at the moment in a particular deal where it's come through a third party platform and I know that they have a very that broker has a very high commission so I'm thinking okay well do I wait it out 
until that lead comes to me directly because they will eventually. They will get bored. They will, if they're not getting any traction or getting anywhere with that broker, they might try another broker. They might take a break, come back. Eventually, in my experience, sometimes it's six months down the track. They've got nowhere else to go and they're like, okay, we're going to have to give up our identity. We're going to have to deal with the actual seller broker because we are in a position where we're like, well, we don't want to take 20 to 25% off the table. So do you guys consider that when, do you consider that like when you're dealing with particular platforms and brokers, like are you taking into account what they're taking off the table? I'm interested. So, Logan, you want to say something? No, go ahead. Okay. Okay. So I'm not upfront. I will not say that this is the right approach. Okay. Uh, Clearly, the more optimized, the more thoughtful approach is the one you're saying. However, in my experience, because we're in the domain, uh, and people don't understand domains, they don't understand the pathways, they don't understand the transaction processes, they don't understand the ownership, they don't understand who the people are. That there's just a lot of uncertainty. And uncertainty is the enemy of commerce. Okay, uncertainty. I would say is the single greatest enemy of successful, efficient commerce. So um, I do not put a lot of faith in the buyer, except in those exceptional circumstances where the domain is a must have. But if the domain is not a must have, which it rarely is, then uh I don't put a lot of faith in their ability to come and track me down six months down the road. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. It certainly does. But I am a, uh, I'm a believer in a bird in the hand. Uh, and so look, if we're talking about a four or a five figure domain name, I don't really take into consideration uh, okay. the, 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 uh, the commission at all, n- not whatsoever, because at the end of the day, I want to remind everybody yeah. that never before in the history of mankind has the seller ever paid a commission, ever in the history of mankind. I don't care if the broker represents the buyer. I don't care if the broker represents the seller. It doesn't matter. I don't care if it's a marketplace. Never before in human history has a seller ever paid a commission. It is always paid by the buyer. Whatever the terms are, the the money is coming out of the buyer's pocket. And so the buyer determines the total amount that they're willing to pay for a particular thing, be it a domain name or whatever else. And then they're going to decide if there is a uh, 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 price to value relationship that, 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 that they can get comfortable with. And so the commission is irrelevant to the buyer and therefore should be irrelevant to me. Now, the only place like above a certain amount, if we're talking about 25% of GoDaddy, I'm never going to pay 25%. And so therefore, I'm just not going to list my names unless I'm willing to put my names on their name servers, et cetera, and the whole thing. Okay. But for the most part, I will, I, I, it just, the, the, the commission, Jen, I'm just trying to finish the, 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 the you, you know, you asked a question, I'm finishing my thought. So uh, I don't Continue. think the commission really plays a role. Now, if you're getting into big numbers, it's a different story, but- for the most okay, part, so no, that, I, don't, that, I don't take it into account. Okay, you made a good point that I didn't point out. You made a great point. When it comes to those smaller figures, like four to fives, whatever, who cares? And you're right. So when it is a four to five sale or a negotiation, those people typically like the knowledge base within them, they're going to somehow trip upon this like GoDaddy buy service. When it – so – the situation that I'm in though, this is kind of like a quarter of a million dollar plus sale. So mm-hmm. these people, in my mind, it's a 50-50 to me. So they can either be that person that you've described who doesn't really understand the landscape. They'd rather go through a big brand. They feel like this person's going to take care of them. Fine. Or they're very educated and they're wanting to have anonymity. They want, they're happy to pay that commission to this person. 
Um, so yeah, so that's I agree with you. Like when it is like the lower scale of the sale, sure, I don't mind with those sales and paying out commissions because you're right, like they're aware, but they're not aware. But when it comes to the higher end stuff, that's when I have to start asking some questions. No, I think it's a good point. I think both sides are interesting. You know, for me, um, I was saying, this was actually what I was saying before, where I was saying shout out to After Nick for working the buyer and getting the price up closer to where, you know, the anchor price or what have you, as opposed to, you know, it sounded like, as opposed to spending the time trying to beat up Logan to get his price to, you know, to knock the price down. So that's all I was saying. But that's, it's an interesting point about sort of the, the sophistication, the, desire and the resourcefulness on the part of the buyer to circumvent the broker depending. So Jen, are you talking about names that are parked with Afternick, like Afternick Landers, no. or are you talking about names with no. Evergreen Landers? No, these are Evergreen Landers. So people who have actually chosen to go through their buy service to protect their identity. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they, in my mind, are educated buyers. They know what they're doing because they would have gone to the lander and right. seen that there is an inquiry form there to begin a negotiation or an inquiry, but they've chosen to go on down a different route. So then I have to think to myself, why? I read that differently. I read that differently. I actually, for the exact same reason, believe that that tells me that there is an uneducated buyer. Really? Yes. Because it, it, it's literally just, or maybe they're just saying, yeah, I'm perfectly comfortable to pay an extra 15 or 20 percent. But uh I yeah, I I, I it, it's a phenomenon in domain names that I will probably never understand. But we, we did the same. We, we we had all our names on our own landers and uh conversion rate went down. And so I put them back on Afternick, conversion went rate right up three hundred percent. So uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I can tell you that the vast majority of people are not going to be well-educated buyers. And so if my conversion rate is increasing that much simply by having them on a afternet slash GoDaddy lander, um, you know, there's a few conclusions that I come to. One is that, you know, most of these buyers are not educated. Number two, uh, there is value in the GoDaddy branding and trust. And three, um, there is likely value in the ability to quickly transact with a credit card versus you know, going through like an escrow and dealing with, you know, human contact, <laughs> right? A lot of these people really, actually, their preference is literally just that they don't want human contact. They don't want to have an email exchange. They don't want to get on the phone. They just want mm -hmm. to bang it with a credit card and move on. They don't care about you. They don't want to have a fucking conversation. They don't anything. Yeah, they don't but, even want to fucking okay. talk about but, the price. They just at want, four to, you know, at four to five figures that makes sense. Okay. Yep. But when you get you into a quarter of a million dollars or over, that requires a conversation. I, I, yeah. It's true. I, that, that probably the circumstances change. But the weird thing, which is to no end frustrating to me and likely to you as well, uh, is that it actually doesn't change with the big names. For the most part, it doesn't change. It's just <laughs> they, 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 the behavior is the same. Um, in my experience, they, they I find that they uh, do. Uh, I, I do find that at that it, at the highest at the end. higher end, at the highest yeah. end, they will definitely like. In my experience, like there's some like game playing going on at the sure. beginning. Absolutely, but if you've got the patience, <laughs> and they they will always come and find you. That's in my experience. Like if I put my foot down and go, no. Nope, like they well, can especially see if what the domain has, is, the, especially if the domain so, is worth it. But let's break that down to first principles. Why does it change at the highest end? The, again, in my opinion, the only reason it changes is that what we're doing is we're shifting from something that is a nice to have or an optional mm -hmm. choice to something that's a must have. That's the only difference. Right. The difference is it's it's less about the amount of money. It's about the sophistication of the buyer and the tr the fact that this is a must have versus a nice to have. And so in those cases, 
the the leverage changes. Now the leverage is in the hands of the owner as opposed to the buyer. Right. Yep. I agree with that. Uh, Logan, so I was going to ask you then for what, you know, what's your kind of approach go to, not to recap everything they just talked about or pick a side, but, um, pick a side, Logan. So are you listing your names with, uh, I don't think we're saying, I don't think we're saying things. I don't think we're saying, no, no, I was, I was more, we're not, we're not. I think I'm just trying to, uh, analyze the reasons why, or, you know, why is, why does behave, why do you see buyer behavior in certain areas? And it's uh, fascinating the psychology behind it all and why totally. they do what they do. like that's yeah and I totally agree with you I do think it is about sophistication timing convenience price points it's it there are so many different circumstances that come into play it's hard to um really just put it down to a it's this or it's that you know no, I, so Logan, what's your approach? Is it listed after Nick Park or GoDaddy? What's your uh, what are you typically finding? And especially with your CCTLDs, like, or do you, do you have a different approach because you're doing a lot of CCTLD stuff? <clears throat> I pretty much do all buy it now, and I'm doing it all at after Nick Landers. Okay, um, and that works pretty well for me. I used to price uh, when before GoDaddy bought Dan, and Dan only had a nine percent commission. I used to have lower prices on the Dan Landers and higher prices in the marketplace at Afternick and even Sato. And I would still have people avoid the Dan Lander and go buy it at GoDaddy at the higher yep. price. Uh, just yep. because they, they trust the GoDaddy brand and GoDaddy, yep. GoDaddy's equity in their brand is just huge. And so they feel safe. The buyers feel safer going through GoDaddy instead of talking to us directly. And so I just try to feed into that as much as possible because I, I love the fact that the Afternick buy it now Lander is actually on GoDaddy.com. The URL is basically on GoDaddy.com. So when they go, go to the landing page, they see GoDaddy right there. They're on the website. Uh, so it's just a very trustworthy, less you know, frictionless, as much as possible, uh, of a transaction for them. So I don't, you know, I, I'm happy to pay the 15%, whatever it is that GoDaddy charges now, um, because it, it's worth it for me. Sure. Well, like you said, at the end of the day, or actually, I'm not like you said, like Drew said, at the end of the day, you're not paying the commission the buyer is. Um, all yeah. right, cool. So, well, good stuff. I, I love, this is real domain talk. You know, this is what it's all about. Um, Danica Patrick was and, worth every dollar in those Super Bowl ads, yeah. guys. <laughs> and it's not, it's not, this isn't easy for me to even really say because, you know, I was very vocal when, when, when GoDaddy came out and said, look, we're going to make it, you know, it's 25% commission unless you're on our landers. I was like, look, this is literally, and I still believe it is, uh, borderline unfair business practices, <laughs> but, um, ballsy, <laughs> you know, I mean, look, it, it, they're probably lo- one lawsuit away from that having to change. But that being said, uh, the, 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 the brand equity is real. I have fully capitulated much to the dismay of, you know, Chris and Matthew and, and our brokerage team, because, you know, I'm not sending them as many leads as I used to, because, uh, you know, a lot of these names, I've just put them on uh, 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 the after Nick Landers because the conversion rate is just so much higher. Um, and so it's just, it's the cost of doing business. You know, uh, I, 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 I don't really take, you know, the commission into account. I price a name for what I think the name should be priced at. And the commission I pay is the cost of doing business. So, um, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's I mean, all I, I think, say about that. No, it's all good stuff. It's very good. All right, cool. Well, do you have a name to throw up for the domain game? <laughs> all right, uh, hydrotherapy.com. Hydrotherapy.com. I forgot we were even playing the domain game. This is a buy or sell? Okay. Uh, this is sell. This is sell. Hydrotherapy. Therapy.com. This is sell. This is a name from, from uh, our legacy portfolio. Um, had it a while. So I'm actually out on this one. I've got some insight. So it's a bummer. I'm trying to win this game. Trying to win. Okay. So just me and just you and just you and Jen. So head to head. Hydrotherapy. Okay. All right. 
fit. Ready I to don't go. know. Here we go. Flip it. Three, two, one. Boom. Okay. All right. Jen's got $22,222. Logan's at $60,000. Oh, <laughs> wow. Woo. <laughs> I want to give it to Logan, but it actually goes to Jen by a Woo. hair. Damn. Goes to Jen <laughs> by a hair. But it really, you know, you know, if we were, if this was, if this was Price is Right, Logan wins. Yeah, of course. I, I thought it was worth more for sure. Oh, no, Price is Right is the closest without going over. No, no. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah, but I just thought when the yeah, we should have had JT play. Uh, he doesn't even know when what you the price said- was. <laughs> 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 no, you when, said technically Logan wins. Legacy. No, when you said, said if legacy it was Price is Right volume. rules, Logan would win. No, no. If price is Price is Right rules, Logan wins. Yes. What, what was, was the price? What did you sell it for? The price. The price for forty thousand rules. My God. Okay. The price for forty thousand dollars. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that means, uh yeah. Wait. The pr- closest to the pin without. Go- ah, you're right. You're right. Whoa, oh, you're she right. wins. Billy, 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 stop. Yeah, yeah. Do the no, whole no, thing no, where you do Jen that. Wins. No question about it. Jen wins. But I was thinking in my head that under Price is Right rules. I, no, I get that. But uh, hold on, Billy. Do the whole rewind thing. Point. JT is right. Rewind. JT is right. You know, do all that. Then we can get back and we can continue. Okay. The price was $40,000, right? Yeah. Okay. So that means, uh, yeah. Wait, the price. Closest to the pin without go- ah, you're right, you're right, ah, you're right, you're right, ah, you're right, you're right. <laughs> I screwed myself. Be- I screwed myself because I had fifty thousand dollars and oh. I rethought it and I put sixty. But I thought I didn't think Drew would sell a name like that one, which would have a- it's a pretty high ticket item. Um, and I think it they would is, go at a higher higher value. Look I, again. I will repeat. Much to dismay. Of everybody who, you know, all the haters. Okay. I put my money where my mouth is all the time on a daily basis. Okay. And so what do we do? We go over, we look at our SEO tools. Okay. We say, how many searches a month are there for hydrotherapy? Again, this is more of a descriptive commercial term than it is, let's say, an arbitrary brand, right? If it was, I don't know, uh, I don't know. Great.com is not really a name you can price by looking at the data, right? It's like, it's an opportunity cost valuation. Uh, whereas hydrotherapy is a commercial descriptive term, right? And so we look at the data and the data says there are 16,000 people a month in the United States that search for the word hydrotherapy every month. Uh, it does not have a particularly exciting long tail, although there is certainly some substance there. Um, and, uh, uh, worldwide, there are 44,000 exact match searches per month for the domain name hydrotherapy. The number two place that it's searched for is India. So you can basically write that off. Um, and, um, that's just, that's not a a dig on India. It's just the commercial traffic of India is basically worthless, right? So, Mm -hmm. so basically 16,000 people per month. In the United States, four thousand per month in the in the UK, four thousand Australia, two thousand Canada. That's your commercial audience, yep. and uh, the cost per click that advertisers pay is only sixty cents. It's under a dollar, which basically means that there's very few, if any, uh, commercial enterprises that are buying that traffic, that are really competing for that traffic. There does appear to be some organic competition. But the you know the domain, um, you know the the difficulty, the ranking difficulty uh, uh, on Ahrefs is fifty one. Like that's nothing. That's not a hard term, right? So so uh, that tells me that you know the let's say global demand is forty four thousand at forty thousand dollars sale price. I think I got a hundred percent of the value of this name. In fact, I'd even argue if you if you do extrapolate out. And you're looking at a cost per click that's under a dollar. It's only 60 cents. We probably sold this for about a 30% premium. So while at first glance, I agree, I look at hydrotherapy and I think, ooh, great name. You know, that clearly should be like a low six-figure name, at least high five-figure. I go by the data. The data doesn't lie, 
right? Sometimes you undersell something because there is a subjective reason that your buyer wants this name and you're not aware of that. But I, you cannot build a business on that. Now, if you want to be Rick Schwartz and you want to just, and I'm not putting Rick down, clearly amazing strategy that has been successful. But I like to turn my inventory, okay? I've got, let's say, maybe there's 50 names that I, you're going to pay my price or you're going to pound sand, period, okay? But the rest of the stuff, I'm going to price it intelligently. I'm going to look at the data. I'm going to look at the commercial enterprises that are potential buyers for this domain. I'm going to price it accordingly. And I think that hydrotherapy has 44,000 global demand, only 16,000 in the US, and is only a 60 cent cost per click, $40,000. I think we had it priced at 49, and we got 40, and I think we got 100% of uh, the value. I think it's a good price. Cool. Yeah. I should have yeah, stuck to my original 50,000. <laughs> exactly. That's the moral of the story. So Jen basically sure. is going to win regardless, but let me throw another name out there just because we want to give the, uh, we want to give the viewers their money's worth. So since Jen doesn't have a name, I'm just going to pull a recent sale. Oh, you want to do I another? Do another if, you want, if, you want, if you guys want to play. Well, you know, you guys, Logan. Yes. Yeah, Logan, if yeah. You've got then I get to guess. Give it to us, baby. Yeah. And then I get to play, then I get to play, which is okay. still have a chance. Get to this play is and which is really all he wanted was the ability to play <laughs> the ability to participate <laughs> uh, taking it by the way defi he wanted was a participation trophy no the ability to participate is different than the participation trophy um defi U is a badass site by the way it looks like a pretty cool blockchain uh you know thing tool thing they've got going oh, on. oh by the way i wanted to make one comment about the defi thing you know it, it is funny to me uh you know, it, it, it's funny to me that people, uh, uh, and this isn't a, this isn't a jab, Logan, but it, it's funny to me that that, and, and, and clearly you were right to think this way because you sold the domain for thirty eight thousand dollars, which you know, proofs in the pudding, as they say. But it's funny to me that people think that it's because something is related to DeFi that it should have some material value. It is my experience that it's quite the opposite, meaning that. If you think about what DeFi is, it means it is decentralized. There is no centralized party. And in order to achieve an exceptional sales price for anything, you need a centralized party that has an ego and a, and a, and a, and a, and a uh, let's say a, uh, an ambition, uh, to pay up for a premium domain name. And as the nature of decentralization is that there is no centralized party and getting people who are decentralized, truly decentralized to agree on anything is, you know, like herding cats. Um, I find it somewhat uh, ironic that anyone should think that something related to DeFi should sell at a premium as opposed to something which is centralized. If you catch my drift. It is interesting. So, uh, but go ahead, Logan, you got one for us. You said it was another sale. <laughs> yes, it's another sale. You ready? <laughs> Y'all ready? <laughs> yeah, we're uh, totally ready. <laughs> this one is this one is perceptive.io. Perceptive.io. Perceptive. P E R C E P E I V E dot I O. Perceptive. All right, I like it. Um all right. Ready to get this point. No. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. It's like brothers and sisters. Like, I just want to beat you. I like, so bad. So you should see me and my sister. Like, she's like you, where she's like, Perceptive. so competitive. We can't play board games on holidays. It just gets crazy. No, because people in my house, when we play Monopoly or, you know, like people end up crying. So, oh, yeah, go. yeah. No, no, no. If we play Monopoly, I make people cry. It's actually my 12 year old that always wins he's like it's it's really wild well um, i know what we're doing next conference <laughs> exactly. monopoly Let's we're doing it. a monopoly right. tournament. i yo by the way i have always so badly i don't even really know why i haven't done it but i've wanted to create a domain name monopoly game so bad oh, domain names are so that. meant for monopoly yeah. you know yes. there's like you know, there's like, let's say the, you know, the top, I, how many squares are on a Monopoly board? Maybe 60, like 40, 80? yeah, whatever. Yeah. 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 Right. It's like, you know, top 50, 100 domain names in the world, 
up. You know, you got sex.com, you got love.com, art.com, home.com, you know, money.com. Do it, Drew. Do it. Uh, How cool would that be? That's the coolest merch. Yeah, that's, and they're 40, 40 cool. by the way, it is for it's 40 squares. So do I get a point in the domain game for guessing how many squares? The only no. the only problem <laughs> is that I think our audience is probably limited to like, you know, the couple thousand people that watch Domain Sherpa. Like it's, it's, it's it literally be, like like nobody yeah. else on earth is ever buying domain name monopoly. I don't think you would make it to to sell it. I think you make it to like give it away as like a cool, like, you know, like we'll do a media options or domain sherpa branded domain monopoly game. And he swag that nobody ever receives. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, exactly. Like Logan, come on, man. we were cool. We were cool. That could be the, you know, what, what, what's the what's the pile of the cards with the with question mark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chance, chance. Yeah, Do chance. Mer- chance. There's, there's merch chance never arrived. Tried. Merch never arrived. Yeah. Go back three spaces. Yeah, go, go back three spaces. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, wait, hold on. We still didn't. Let's go. Are we? We didn't guess on the name yet, right? Perceptive.io. io. You ready, Joe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, three, All right. two, one. All right. Okay, so it's a sale. Jen has seven thousand seven hundred and seventy seven dollars. I have twelve thousand five hundred. Drew's got twenty four thousand eight hundred and ninety five dollars. Logan to circle get the square. What is the deal? Drew in. Oh Aww. man, you are you're doing your thing, man. Wow, look at that. I think you just came up here to flex. You know? You're just like, oh man, I've been waiting for this invite to come up and show people what I do and how I do it. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yes. all right. it, was, it, it was a uh, $29,995 buy it now. Boom. Yeah, we got to reprice and get our names, like all our names listed. And we went through a big old <laughs> pricing exercise. It's still a work in progress. And uh, so was that also through Afternick or was that through somewhere else? Also through Afternick. And then what did you pay for the name when you acquired it, if you can tell us? And how long did you hold it? Uh, I held for 588 days. And I paid six hundred and five dollars at docky dot l y back in february twenty twenty two Wow, good for you, dude. I love it. I love the acquisition, obviously, so uh the um meaning like the the platform right so is that um is that where'd you say you got it docky dot l y it's a drop catch for c c tlds yeah. pretty much yeah no it's, I mean, like, it's, like, it's a competitor to park it's a competitor to yeah, yeah, well, that's what, I, and I would. My guess would be that not too many people are familiar with it, right? And that's where I think is an interesting thing when you talk about niche stuff. CCTLDs, I like CCTLDs better than you know so the new Gs, right? The, the CCTLDs are where IOs, AIs, VCs, you know, there's 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 gold in them, there hills, right? If you know how to mine for it, and um, mm-hmm. I think that's an ex- that's a perfect example. So. Pretty cool, man. And that's one of the things here about Domain Sherpa that's really interesting. Hey, I tell people. You just, know, we just, kinda... just for clarification, though, uh, when you say you're uh, a heavy CCTLD investor, are you looking for what I call generic CCTLDs, like a .ai that doesn't actually represent the country code? It's more of a generic meaning. Or a .io, which is, again, more of a generic meaning. Um, most people probably don't even know that it represents Indian Ocean. So... Or are you looking for dot DEs, you know, dot UKs, dot, you know, FR, the things that represent a country? No, secondary meaning. I'm looking at GG, IO, AI. So things that have a you know commercial meaning to more, yeah. so, than, more so than the yeah. dot DE or anything like that. Yeah. That, that's what I assumed. I just wanted to clarify for the audience. The, the, just because the, the only, the, people, the only one, people, the only, the Go. only one I do People. Uh, for the country yeah. is dot a dot a e. So they'll do dot ah. a e for UAE. That's yeah. pretty cool, man. A lot of growth. A lot of growth happening in in Arab Emirates. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. On, I'll be flying, I'll be flying. Yeah, congratulations on the Thank sales. You. That's Thank awesome. You. All right. Well, look, that's the domain game. Jen officially wins. Congratulations, Jen. There we go. Was was that the cheering? By the way, I never know which buttons are which. You know, was, did you guys that hear that? Cheering, yeah. Ended like screaming, mm-hmm. <laughs> clapping. That's, that's what we're getting. That's that's what you get. I should actually mark these at some point. I mean, I have a handful of them. Um, all right. Well, congratulations, Jen wins the domain game. You know, Jen, for somebody who talks about like I don't want to play the domain game. If I got to come on and do the domain game, you're killing me. You literally win it like at, like almost like sixty percent of the time on the show. So. 
Good job again, Jen. You might get more. I sweat. know, but I just feel like it's it, a lot of it is just not in my wheelhouse. So it's just guessing, like, to be honest, like I don't. Yeah. Well, you're anyway. doing good, good guessing, good guessing. All right. Well, look. good guessing. <laughs> Media Options is the industry's leading domain broker specializing in domain acquisitions, high value domain sales and domain name consultation. As pioneers and thought leaders on the subject of the domain aftermarket and domain name value, plus through their clear domain acquisition service, Media Options offers startups and established corporations an unparalleled scope of high-value domain options, providing access to domain names and curation technologies not available elsewhere. Media Options believes in the power of a great domain name and is dedicated to helping you obtain yours. Call or email today to put a domain to work for you. <laughs> we're going to keep it moving, and we're going to go into our Name Jack in a Jet segment. So that was the domain game. We're now sliding into segment three, which is Name Jack and a Jet. This section sponsored by Name Jet, reviewing domains coming up for auction. Um, if you go to the Domain Sherpa page on the website, domainsherpa.com, for this episode, you can pull a spreadsheet that has some data around the Esteban valuation. Take those with a grain of salt. How many bids as of the time we do the show? When the back order end date is? There's actually one. Now you can kind of jump in these auctions like as they're happening. So um, I do have at least one name where the back order end date is prior to when the show is going to air. So for that particular one, you might want to get moving on it sooner because you will not have the opportunity to bid on it once you get to a certain point. Um, but anyway, other than that, um, you know, there's links to the actual page on the Name Jet site. So this is really just, you know, we don't have an affiliate relationship. It's just to help y'all. So definitely check that out if it helps you guys. And then in the meantime, we're going to talk about which ones the Sherpas like, what they don't like. Um, and, uh, you know, which ones they think might sell for more than they're willing to pay and all that good stuff. So we've got a list of 14 names. Uh, there was actually one name that it looks like had already been renewed. So Logan, so what did you do? Did you do some kind of like a, who is, uh, the kind of like a, who is scrub or something on the list? Cause it was still available for name bidding on or uh, back ordering on name jet, like as if there was an upcoming back order end date. Um, so obviously it looks like it's been renewed. So, yeah, I just noticed that noticed that it had been prepaid about five years to 2029. So therefore it could not be, um, pending the leap. Sure. So, but did you check the who is on all the domains? Is that what you did? Yes. Yes. I, sorry. I checked the who is on all the domains. <laughs> I even looked at, I even looked at the, uh, U S uh, patent and trademark office for all of them, as well as just a good, a good old Google search. Oh, yeah, even okay. Crunch, so, crunch face lookup. As well. hey, this is what I'm talking about. We're talking about guests that take their charge seriously coming on the show and doing, doing the thing. And that's what I like. I like that a lot. Um, all right. So hundred percent, since you did the research a little bit, I'm a, you can go first and let's pick a couple of names that you like, and then give me at least one that maybe you think will either sell for more than you're willing to pay for it, or you just don't like it. Well, there's, there's two that I like a lot, but I think are risky because of trademark uh, considerations. Okay. Um, and I think I think in the end that the auction people will overpay for them and potentially put themselves at risk potentially. Okay. And that that would be Akira and Biopure. Mm, okay. Um, Biopure has so many trademarks on it, um, which could be good, could be bad, you know. Um, but I just feel like. Um, there would be an aggrieved buyer out there who would probably want to go after that name if you asked too much for it. That's just my own opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and then Akira is definitely uh, many different uh, trademarks, even an anime character, cartoon character out there. So there's some IP around that one a lot. So I like the names. I just, I'm not going to go after them because I just don't think I may want to put myself in a position to own them. Um, but it's just my own strategy of how I do this. The ones. Sure. I, the ones I like the most, though, that I think would be kind of me trying to get it for as little as I could, um, but in the end have a you know good value, to me would be futuretech.com and topform.com. I think those are both brandables that have a lot of use out there. Uh, I like future tech better than top form, but okay. I think... Um, I think they're kind of sleepers. I think, you know, they're not, they don't jump off the page as being the best ones on the page, but I think com compared to the others and what they'll eventually sell for, I think those are the ones that have potentially for good value. Um, mm. And lastly, crit, crit.com is a good one. And I think it'll sell for pretty high. So I, I think future tech is the one I would like to get, try to get as best of a bargain price as I could. 
I think crit will get too high, get too high, and I'll probably have to bow out in the end. But I think it's a really good one. Okay. Well, so all right, Jen, let's kick it over to you. And what do you think? Are there any of the ones that uh, that Logan mentioned kind of on your short list after you looked at the list? Um, he obviously did a better job with his research. So you know, like it's you know. Yeah. See, um, like there is someone else that comes prepared, trying to provide value. You know, like <sighs> these are the people I love. Um. Uh. I do. I like Rochelle. Okay. Um, yeah. it's and I ignoring the Estibot value because I think that's rubbish. Um, because it can be misspelled a lot. But I do like the personal names, and there are a bunch of companies out there with that name. Um, I'm sure there are yeah. a bunch of. TMs I also well. noticed with that, you know, it's it's places, right? There is a town in Illinois. There's New Rochelle, which is a town in. Yeah. Um, New York. New York. Um, there's La Rochelle, which is a city in the west coast of France. Um, so yeah, I think, and that's probably why you know. So what do you guys, uh, real quick, just a, just a you know, thirty second. When you look at city names, um, how do you feel about those in general? Like, is our city name something that you leave to the folks that are focused on geo type stuff? Yeah. Uh, is it yeah. you know? I've, uh, uh, I've represented a bunch of like state countries trying to like who do you sell these to so it's either like you kind of go down that commercial avenue of like tourism right or you try to go into like the government sectors they don't want to spend money so it's i don't know i when it does like so i wasn't thinking of that one as a geo but it is um but yeah i don't i i i stay away from the geos personally all right. Well, cool. We'll keep it moving. What else you like? Uh, not much. Um, <laughs> you're always so picky too with these because you guys deal with such high end stuff. I get it. I, this name jet. This this. Uh, you know, so with top form stuff. that Logan mentioned, I just kind of the, that one. I was a bit like, ooh, it like from a branding perspective, like with type form, it kind of made me a little bit. Uh, like a little bit potentially jarring for whoever's trying to use that if they're in that form vertical. Any of these like doubleyourmoney.com, like those kind of like long tail names, yeah, I mean, if, if you can get it for the right price, you will potentially get like a small um, piece of that. But, I, yeah, nothing else really like stood out to me in this one. Okay. All good. Drew, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, we kind of covered everything, but um, I, I I hear what Logan's saying on Akira, I, but I love that name. I like that name mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, you know, you got to be very careful. And if you are going to make a concerted play to buy that name, be prepared that there's a pretty strong likelihood you will, in order to achieve, there are certain names like this, whereby you need to have high conviction. And you need to have deep pockets. And regardless of what you pay for it in auction, you need to be prepared that in order to achieve your, your ultimate sale price of what the name is actually worth, you're likely going to have to fight a battle. Uh, and on the backside of that battle, you will shift the perspective of who has the leverage with that opportunistic buyer and uh, potentially achieve uh, you know, the sale price that, that the name is worth if you play your cards right. But that requires a lot of ifs. It requires you to have the pockets to fight the battle. It requires you to have the conviction to fight the battle. It requires you to say no to lower offers, knowing that saying no is likely to get you into a legal battle. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of things there. But Akira.com in and of itself, in a vacuum, uh, ignoring all of that, is a phenomenal, awesome. phenomenal, awesome. phenomenal nice domain. Name. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it is just a tremendous brand with multiple applications, a ton of IP around it, and uh, you know it's uh, it's it's a sweetheart of a name, but not for the faint of heart. It is going to cost you a lot of emotional and uh, uh, you know stress, uh, emotional resources and stress. Um, I want to love double your money, 
Like I like I do love double your money, but the the rational part of me is like really know oh, yeah. what you're gonna do. Who, who with do you it. sell it to? I don't know who the yeah, I don't know who the buyer is. You know, maybe some kind of online yeah. scam casino type of thing. Um, I don't know, but I I, I want to love it. So it's like one of those names under a grand. I'd probably buy it, but um, it'd probably be in my portfolio twenty years from now still, and I'd still be saying, "Oh, I love that name." Uh, you know, what would you do it? So, yeah. But uh, uh, what else do I like in here? I don't know. I feel like log cabin we've seen like 48 times over the last 15 years on name jet. Um, yeah. No, you know, I'll agree on future tech is, is just a great name. You know, we sold future.com to uh, a 16 Z uh, uh, Anderson Horowitz for their uh, future.com blog, you know, talking about the future of technology. Uh, and so future tech is, you know, right in that vein. It's a great name you know, perfectly makes sense for a media play in the future of technology, which is probably one of the only few places in media where you can actually make money. And um, uh, I, I like it. Great name. Um, but more of a media name than a, oh, I'm going to be a startup that launches new tech, right? It's it's more of a more of a VC name or a, you know, a small angel name or a media play, uh, you know, in that, that field. Sense. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. I'm with it. And then if I pick one that I don't like, I don't really like Gold Cash. You know, we've seen that movie before. We're not going to have some gold backed digital currency. That shit is, that ship has sailed. Um, so I don't really see a value in Gold Cash. I, to me, that's just like word soup. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think that's, uh, yeah, I was surprised. I don't, you know, it, Okay, oh, I'd, I'd rather have cash for gold. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Cash for gold, baby. Cash mm-hmm. for there gold was... is that's that's a huge, huge name, right? Massive, massive. Yeah. What about uh, uh, so the name I was talking about? Where it's probably it's already going to be an auction by the time the show airs is Traintrack dot com. Traintrack dot com. Any value there? Not really. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, well, you know, um, the manufacturer of train track. You know, like, okay, could it be some blockchain company? It's like, oh, we're laying the tracks and we're going to be train tracked. We're laying the rails, uh, you know, for digital payments of the future. Ah. It's like, <laughs> okay, you got 500 other fucking options, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's just, if you got like train track option, we talk about that for like a lot $500, yeah. this is the thing I, I, I want to pound into people's heads. You know, I've said it before. Say it again. I don't care. Somebody, somebody I respect, some one of the top domain traders in the market, hit me up yesterday, offering me domain. Okay, this is somebody I know and love, and somebody that you guys all know and love. Very intelligent person in the domain space, but even they don't get this absolutely fundamental principle. This is rule number one. I don't care if you want to be a domain investor or a stock investor or a gold investor or a Bitcoin. It doesn't fucking matter. Everything in the universe is relative. Okay. There is nothing in a vacuum. And so when you're making a choice to buy traintrack.com or anything else for that matter, an ounce of gold, a car, a house, a stock, doesn't matter. It is relative to every other opportunity for which you could allocate that same amount of capital. Okay. And so then you need to evaluate it based on your priorities. What are your priorities? Are you looking for, do you have a time preference? Are you looking to maximize your upside? Are you looking to minimize your downside? Are you looking to, uh, uh, you know, just accumulate? Are you looking for the best opportunity that's available at a particular time? Are you looking for the best ROI? What are you optimizing? for? And based on that framework, you need to evaluate every investment you make, every domain you purchase, not from, is this worth it, but is this the best use of my capital at this moment in time? Should I deploy capital at all? And so this guy approached me yesterday and he said, hey, I know you're going to love this domain. And he was right. It's a domain I love. But he's asking a price that I think is probably roughly double. Now, it's still 
some might say is in the wholesale range, but it's at the very high end, the very tippity top of the wholesale range. And, you know, he say, do you want to buy this? I know you love it. You know, I just buy it, overpay. And six months ago, I probably would have because the opportunity cost of deploying that capital was lower. Today, I'm fully deployed into Bitcoin. So everything I'm going to sell, anything I want to buy, I'm going to basically be selling Bitcoin in order to reallocate to something else. And so I'm evaluating every single purchase in that framework of, okay, my opportunity cost is whatever I believe the opportunity is in, in this alternative investment, right? It's it's whatever whatever it is. Maybe, maybe you're not a Bitcoin guy. Maybe you're gold. Maybe you're stocks. Maybe you're whatever. There's a 20% rip still upside probably on the S&P right now before we crash. There's a, you know, so th- there's there's always an opportunity cost. Always something relative to the purchase you want to make. And so I'm sorry that's a very long way of answering the question. But if I look at a name like traintrack.com, it's a punt. Okay. And at this moment in time, I'm not looking for a punt. Okay. Because you're all you're doing is tying up capital when there's a tremendous amount of opportunity cost. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a it, great point. It uh it's a nice alliteration in terms of being a brandable for train track. You know, it sounds nice. Uh, and most of the usages I saw for it was actually for training, for tracking your training. Ah. How much training have you completed? Ooh, I kind of like, like, like it for that. Reason. Now <laughs> you got to like it. Exactly. I was like, I'm in. All that I'm shit in. I said before. But, no, <laughs> yeah, but, but are they big time spenders? I don't. But I, I, no. I don't think it's a highly, I don't think it's a highly, highly viable domain. Uh, that's why I didn't make my cut. I just didn't. Th- Even though I like train track, I like the alliteration in it. Just didn't think much to it. Well, and I think that you make a really good point, um, and you've mentioned it a couple of times uh, in your analysis when you talk about your names and your pricing and all that. Is that you know about the idea of a buyer with with deep pockets, right? And and mm-hmm. you know Chris talks about it in his book. We talk about it on the show all the time. It's like who is the buyer for the domain? You know, when we look at the buyer types, and you know, it really does based on you know the ultimate ability for a real end user or someone you know with real real money to come in and you know, pay the price that you think a domain is worth, you know, is it like, wh- who is the buyer for that domain? I mean, that's and, and, and to Drew's point, to Drew's point, I think that train is going to go for over a thousand dollars at the auction, but I'd rather have that thousand dollars as gunpowder to buy an even better name. Um, totally. I don't want to buy that one. Love it. I think totally. that makes a lot of sense. And uh, yeah. So, and with that, that is the end of name jet and a jet. Here on Domain Sherpa. We're now into the final segment, which is grand closing, where we talk about anything we have not already talked about or covered. You know, usually we'll plug some ICA stuff or some other things. I uh does anybody, Jen, let me start with you. Uh I kind of go around the horn and then we'll close with Logan. But you got anything in your world that we haven't talked about? I might. No, I might. Right. Same old, same old. <laughs> right, Just trucking along. <laughs> I like it. All good, all good. All right, Drew. What about you, man? Anything that you know aside from your 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 adventures? Uh, Bitcoin fifty day. 50K yeah, man. Day. Bitcoin fifty thousand. Bitcoin broke fifty thousand. You know, we are uh, we're well underway into uh, this bull market. Uh. I don't think uh, most people expected it to happen this way. Uh, I think a lot of people were sitting on the sidelines waiting for a big uh, correction to uh, get an entry point, and uh, they didn't get it. And, and Bitcoin always takes the path of maximum pain. So maximum pain in this case was rip your face off before you got in. And uh, so that's that's where we're at. It's an exciting time. Uh and what's great is that when Bitcoin rips, it generally uh, does well for domains. And so I think um, I think we're going to see an exciting, uh, uh, you know, I think the next the next 60 days, 60, 90 days are going to be pretty exciting. Um, and then I think we're going to see the world blow up. And, uh, uh, and then, you know, what will be will be. I, I, you know, it's funny. I, 
it's going to be such a crazy fucking year because we're going to see it's, it's really going to be bipolar. We're going to see this. You know, I think that we will have totally irrational exuberance over the next 60 days, 90 days, maybe 45 days, whatever it's going to be. Where we're going to see a 20% rip on the S&P. You know, I think the S&P is going to go to 6,000, maybe, you know, even more. I think that you're going to see Bitcoin making a new all-time high. Uh, I think that you're going to see things just get absolutely silly. And then we're going to see some kind of black swan event come. Uh, there's just so many sitting on the horizon. And um, I think that uh, I think that the economic situation is finally going to come, you know, into reality. Uh, I think that that this sort of deceptively strong American economy is, is an illusion that, you know, we're going to pull back the curtain on that in the next 60, 90 days. Uh, I think there's a whole bunch of credit uh, issues that are going to come to the forefront. I think that we're starting to see the next leg down in the banking crisis. I think we're, you know, we got a geopolitical mess. I think they're going to do, you know, U.S. You know, the U.S. Uh, uh, election. You, you just, you got a lot. So I think we got a, a pretty well, rational, yeah. exuberant 60, 90 days in front of us. Then we're going to see a massive, something really ugly is going to happen. But I think that the response to that uh, is going to just be stimulus because that's the only bullet in the gun. And so we're going to just see money print to go burr. And uh, I don't, that is not a positive. I don't want anybody even for a second believe that I think that that's a good thing. It's not, Uh, but it will be a good thing for the Bitcoin price. And uh, if, you know, history is any indication, it will be a good thing for domain names. And, um, and so we'll see what form that takes uh, and we'll see how long it takes for it to sort of ridge the gap. And when I say a gap, the down gap in, in everything, I think, you know, you're going to see asset prices take a, a shit. Um, and, um, but, you know, it, like COVID, we saw that, right? You saw March 2020. Uh, I think, you know, markets basically bridge that gap in like days or weeks. You know, it yeah, was like, not, yeah. well, you, can see you know, it went off a cliff. And then right back up, right? And so yeah. uh, depending on how the how quickly they respond, depending on what type of response, depending on the degree of response, you know, we'll see how quickly that that sort of, I don't, I don't even want to call it a recovery, but we'll see how quickly that response time takes to kick in. And then I think we're going to be back to, uh, you know, I, I said it on Andrew Alleman's predictions thing. This is going to be a repeat of 2020. But instead of COVID, we're going to get something else. It might be economic. It might be political. It might be biological. I don't know what it's going to be. But we're going to see a repeat of 2020. I, I, I really believe that that's basically what we're looking at. Okay. Well, and with that, he's out. <laughs> yes, well, hey. They have, he's out. I've got nothing else to say. Um, wow. All right. Well, that was really good. Really positive. You know. Um, oh, there you go. You know, it was good. Sorry, you ducked out after you made your point and then just disappeared. It was pretty awesome, actually. Because you're like, that's it, Black Swan. Mic drop. Mic drop. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then uh, I know. I mean, look, I, you know. No, no, no. We're good. We're, to, yeah, it's you good. You love to, like, warrow in your sorrows, you know, sorrows. Like, I don't think I'm being negative. I think I'm being realistic. This is what I think is teed up to happen. And I think, well, that, I think you know, I think those who are prepared of- will benefit. This is not, this is an opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you know, you can go into your corner in your dark room and be like, I'm so scared. And, you know, if that's you, I'm sorry. But I like to prepare myself by understanding what I think the outlook is like. Some, it's, there's times when you want to have dry powder, as, as, as Logan alluded to. And there's times when you want to be fully deployed. And there's, you know, uh, you need to make smart financial decisions. You need to make smart company decisions. And, and 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 I think the more information, the more perspectives. I don't, I might be totally wrong. Who the fuck am I? You know. So, uh, but that's how I see it. No, no, uh, I'm, with I'm with you. I'm with you. To get my perspective. So I'm I'm just letting people know what I think and how I'm acting. And, and, we, uh, and we all appreciate you know, it. But let me keep it moving for a second. Um, I do think the point you make about the Black Swan event. I mean, just the election alone is going to create chaos. It's not even a Black right? Swan because so, it's like almost obvious, right? It's just we well, don't know which shoe's going to drop, but there's a whole bunch teed up. That's kind of what I'm saying. So, but hey, uh, Logan, what about you, dude? You know, what do you got going on other than what we've already talked about? And uh, anything else in your world? I know you said you're going to be doing some traveling. What else is good? Yeah, I'm traveling in uh, May and June. 
Uh, otherwise, just looking forward next week to Valentine's Day. My uh, little three and a half year old daughter, we made uh, a custom box for her, for her friends to put their Valentines in her box. And then her mom and her made a bunch of different, like 20 different little handmade Valentine's cards and stuff like that. So they're doing that this week. And uh, that's about it. I mean, I, I, I don't so disagree wholesome. with what I don't dis- disagree with what Drew's talking about in terms of uh, monetary problems and uh, economic problems, because I, dis- I I agree generally with what he's saying. Um, but at the same time, you got to keep a positive outlook as best you can. You know, uh, at least right now, I'm I'm still believe I'm standing in the greatest country uh, in the world. And uh, it had definitely had its problems, probably some of the work problems it's had right now. But uh, I'm still optimistic, you know. Team hard, America, baby, it's, let's it's, go. It's hard, to bet, it's hard to bet against the USA, uh, even on those days that I'd like to leave it. I, so to be clear, uh, <laughs> I am very optimistic about the United States, uh, mm-hmm. just not in the short term. Yeah. So it depends on time horizon is everything, right? So, you know, I, I, I you know, it's going to be pretty ugly, I think, probably for the next 24 months. But I think beyond that, I, I'm super optimistic. 10 years out. <laughs> America will reign supreme. I firmly believe America, that. America, yeah, you know, because when this chaos, day, yeah, America, they, fuck yeah. that when when <laughs> everything goes wrong, it, it's actually usually good for the America, right? So when everything goes wrong, it, it's yeah, actually usually go. the dollar that strengthens, right? It's usually yes. U.S. Treasury bonds that catch a bid, right? So, um. All the other countries flee to the dollar for safety. So, hundred percent, hundred percent. Because again, what is that highlighting? It's highlighting relativity, right? Mm-hmm. It's highlighting what we said before. Because nothing is in a vacuum, and so even if the United States is going down the toilet as we speak, it's still better than everything else that's already down the toilet. So, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. you know, it just it, it, it catches a bid. The U.S. will always catch the bid when there's chaos. That's right, baby. Undefeated since uh, 1776. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Um, but um, all right. Well, let's. Uh, I think on that note, you know, uh, I do think. Uh, oh, I will say one more, one more. You know, <laughs> exciting know. thing on the horizon. We do have. Uh, uh, we are going to be kicking off uh, a whole bunch of new exciting stuff with Rally Road uh, in 2024. And uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty pumped. I'm, I'm pretty excited. I think uh, uh, we will have more offerings, and 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 our approach to it is going to be different. And uh, we're going to be even more engaged and and more in the driver's seat. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited. I think if everything goes according to plan, and we can get a couple more deals out there, you know, I think we're going to have a pretty exciting opportunity to allow. Uh, our audience, our fans, our haters to, you know, bet with us. I mean, I don't want to say bet, but, you know, invest alongside us, invest in the domains that we're buying, invest in uh, um, portfolios and, and and packages of domain names that, that we uh, see opportunity in. Uh, and we will be putting our money where our mouth is. Uh, we already are. And so, uh, I am very excited about that. So anybody that is interested in, uh, you know, fractional domain investing, and I know there has been a tremendous amount of interest in that, and there's been different approaches to it. And we had a sort of, you know, an early start um, uh, because of financial conditions, things fell off. You know, they were trying to build more liquidity into the platform in the secondary market before taking more IPOs live. And um, I think we've got a pretty exciting you know, sort of agenda for 2024 and beyond. So very excited about that. Stay tuned for more. Yeah. Super excited for that. So, all right, well, look with, I think we are well over time. I appreciate you guys, Jen. Thank you so much for tuning in. Drew, thank you so much for tuning in for your last show while on, uh, you know, in Thailand and Logan, most importantly, thank you for joining, dude. It's great to have you on the show. Absolutely. Thank you, Logan. Looking forward to the next one. And And, Jen, uh, of course, always, always in, Jen. So, and to the audience, like I say, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Without you, there is no us. So please, we're not hard to find. You have any questions, comments, whatever, whatever, clarifications. Because um, uh, speaking of which, when we had the show last week, we talked about the ENS GoDaddy um, integration and partnership, which I think is very, very cool. And uh, especially love it, especially for Web2 domains that now have the ability to be connected directly to Ethereum wallets. Um 
the point that somebody brought up on Twitter, and we we'll probably will do some follow up as we go. Obviously, Web3 domains are an important thing, and Web3 in general is something that we're very much in the middle of. But um, the uh, somebody had mentioned, because Drew, you're saying that you know, there's risk of getting effectively um, you know, like, uh, so defrauded by the fact that uh, you know, like the .ens domains can be mimicked by a handshake TLD or a handshake domains. And, uh, yeah, I, I hear you. Okay. But he, that, that <laughs> just let me make the clarification. We don't even have to, they, no, 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 stop, 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 stop. Because this is the thing people in, in Dutch, they say, you know, don't try to fuck an ant. Right. And that's basically what this guy's trying to do. Cause my point was not just about that. Somebody can, uh, have dot ETH on handshake. Okay. That's not the point. The point is zoom out a little bit. Anybody can have anything on any blockchain in theory, right? So I can launch a new handshake tomorrow. All it is is literally a copy of the Bitcoin code modified to be a, a, you know, a domain name blockchain, right? And so literally an endless number of people can launch an endless number of blockchains and each and every single one of those blockchains can have a unlimited amount of domain extensions. And so uh, it has nothing to do with just handshake. These are just the emergent players that exist okay. today. I hear you. I and hear there you. are many others. And so the person who is still trying to hold on to their dream of my dot ETH domain is going to be priceless in the future, get a grip on reality. Okay. I'm trying to help you. I've used to be you. I used to think these things used to be something. Get a grip on reality. Don't waste your money. I'm trying to help you. Invest in actual domains that have commercial usability and a future. Right. Period. What about what about the idea that someone could do a handshake.com, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And then they're, you they're know. about to, or maybe they already have it because it was reserved. And as we talked about in the last show, uh, all of these things were released. And so now somebody owns it. Somebody owns the dot org somebody owns the right right com, right so the, the dot so the way to somebody so the difference the dot whatever yeah 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 right uh, and this is just clarifying it for the you know for the folks like me out there you know the lowest common denominator and we need it simplified but so the difference as far as not being able to be sort of scammed with a dot com handshake domain is that that name will not resolve in a major browser right would you say we start there right and you would say that if i was going to try to send money to a dot com domain to make sure i wasn't sending it to the handshake version, I would need to ensure that wherever I'm sending my ETH, um, I need to be doing it through the Ethereum blockchain. Would you say that the, that's like proper, you know, offset? Well, and we don't need to get way down that. This is more too. technical and I am not a yeah. technical person, but at a high level, what you're, what you're, what you're dealing with here is by connecting legacy DNS domain names and call it.com with the ENS protocol, okay? Automatically, you're always sending money over the Ethereum network. There is no alternative network to send it over, right? It only works for Ethereum. You feel me? I do feel it. And you. so all money that you send is being sent over the Ethereum network. And therefore, there's no ambiguity about where the money will arrive. It will arrive at the Ethereum address that is connected to, to your legacy that domain. domain name, yep. right? And so um, there is no ambiguity about it, right? Whereas uh, on anything else, there is ambiguity because you could be dealing with an entirely other cryptocurrency. You could be dealing with an entirely other crypto uh, blockchain. There's no, um, there's no moat let's say I, I for lack of a better word around um you know there's no limiting factor on which network uh uh or who controls the wallet or etc yeah and you're and to your point like and you're not let's not get into a hyper technical discussion about it i just wanted to make the point that that the ens i saw it but again it's just it, let it's me somebody, just make the point man. somebody you... trying to hang on to a dream and that's okay. Just, Dreams are great. You know like, oh, thank okay. you for the clarification that some, you know, that Ethereum owns the dot. It's like, oh, okay, that's great. So what kind of business plan is that? Is ENS going to go now? And every time somebody launches a new blockchain and there's a new dot ETH, now they got to go get that one too, right? 
and, and so that's 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 the that's the conundrum that we face, and that's and, and precisely the, the that reason I like there will never be any say, commercial value to any of this. Right. So what I'm saying is is that ENS has secured the rights to the dot e handshake TLD in an effort to preserve that and protect dot ETH users. So that's um, the equivalent the, of, Oh, my five-year-old fell down, cut his knee and I put a band aid on. Well, at least you did that. And I hope you put Neosporin on as well. Um, anyway. All right. So guys, it's late my time. We've covered a ton of ground. This is a long show, but it's a great one again, Logan. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you to everybody else, Jen, Drew, the audience, everybody. We're going to close it down and shut it down now. And we will see everybody next time here on Domain Sherpa, where all roads lead to domains. Peace out, everybody. See you soon.